Welcome, Jay, plant-based athlete. Uh, it's good to have you. Hi, Paul. How are you this morning? Very I should good, say uh, this afternoon, your time. Yeah, so yeah. I noticed your number. Is that Rhode Island? Uh, I'm actually in Central Virginia. Okay. I thought. So, oh no, sorry. Four zero one's Rhode Island, not four one zero. Okay. Actually, actually, you know what? My cell. Yeah, it's it's actually a Maryland number. Uh, oh, okay. So, I need to change it. I'm I'm in uh, Central Virginia now, which is the local code is a four three four. But uh, but I lived in Maryland for a while before I came into Virginia. Okay, I recognize the number. I I actually lived in uh, Alexandria for six months at one point, Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, grew up, I grew up in McLean uh, near near uh, D.C. Yeah. I had so, a girl. I had a girlfriend years ago that lived in Bethesda, so I I visited her down there and stuff. All right, so. and and. Where where are you from originally? Cape Cod, Massachusetts. All right, man. A town, All right. a town called Falmouth. Oh, I've, it's, I've uh, heard that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's I've about an hour and. Go ahead. Sorry, hour and twenty minutes from Boston, maybe a little beach town. Cool, oh. man. I've got a relative in uh, Situate. Situate, I think mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Yep. All right, man. Um, Sorry, so I'm. Uh, it's breakfast time out here, so. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Well, hey, why don't you tell the audience what do you got in that blender? You got the, how many bananas you got in there? Uh, five, just five frozen bananas and five wet pack uh, menjul dates from that I just got yesterday in the mail. So they're super gooey and soft. Nice. And uh, just some water. Cool. <clears throat> that's one one thing I'd like to talk with you a little bit later on in the interview is about. Uh, fruit and in, in where you where you live and your access to it. But let's start out with um, how you were raised in your family and what kind of diet you were raised with and, and what was your family's uh, views about nutrition and fitness? Um, all right. I'm 40 now, so my parents got divorced when I was like in third grade. My dad was overweight, drank a lot, unhealthy lifestyle. My mom's my mom's skinny, but she just doesn't eat much. You know, she doesn't really eat healthy at all. Um, pretty much grew up with a standard American diet, but I always liked fruit. I remember I would uh, I would go through gallons of orange juice. <laughs> I drank a lot of orange juice as a kid, and uh, I I always had, uh, but I ate a lot of junk food too. I I would eat those those. Flavored ices, you remember those things? Yeah, like Italian the, ice. Italian ice. Yeah, I would have those in the freezer and eat those all the time. Yeah. I just remember eating a lot, a lot, and whatever I wanted, ice cream, whatever. But I was super active as a kid, and then uh, <clears throat> I played three sports all growing up, all even all the way through high school, uh, lettered in football, basketball, and baseball. I got really into lifting too much, actually, when I was in high school. I started lifting in, like, seventh grade. Wow. So I was really abusing my body when I think about it, taking supplements in, like, eighth and ninth grade, you know? So already, <laughs> like, already then, were you doing, like, protein powders, stuff like that? Uh, pro yeah, a supplement probably had everything in the kitchen sink in there, you know? Uh, I remember yeah. taking this stuff called, this called, stuff called hot stuff. And I think it later got banned, so I was probably on steroids in eighth grade or something. <laughs> who, who knows? You know what I mean? It was legal. I'm just saying. Like, I just took whatever to, get, to lift and get big. Oh, just yeah. ate a lot of... Yeah, I, I uh, standard diet through high school. And then I remember in college I got really into... I went through a phase one summer where I got really lean. I was lifting, though. I was doing low fat though, and I so I always kind of knew low fat worked. I was doing a lot of a lot of. I was spoiled. My mom. I would I would work a ton of hours, you know, to help pay towards school. So I'd work like my weekends because I was in a tourist town. I'd work, you know. I remember it, so my Saturday was an eighteen hour work day <laughs> between wow. two jobs. Wow, man. So yeah, so my mom would. My mom was awesome. She'd drop me off some food and stuff, and she always made me like fruit bowls and. She'd make me pasta, and I would eat tuna out of the can, you know. So yeah. I was eating a lot of protein, but I was eating, I was eating very low fat. And uh, I remember getting really lean in college on that. And then after school, 
in my late twenties, I I got a job in New York City as a stockbroker, right, and um, that's when my health, really, as a stockbroker in New York City, uh, that's when my health really deteriorated. Deteriorated. I um, well, wait, wait. I was working long days. Sorry. Before before you go into that, um, can you tell me when you were in high school and college, and you're doing kind of a, and maybe you can say this is com maybe common for athletes in high school and college. They are they? I know the wrestlers are kind of concerned about fat. So, so are most athletes kind of keeping fat low, or uh, and and they're doing high protein, I'm sure. And uh, I guess they watch carbs to some degree. Not back then. They didn't. I don't yeah. think. Um, and that was back in the early '90s. You know. Yeah. I played rugby in college. Our okay. main our main source of calories was beer. <laughs> <laughs> we we drank a lot. Um, Hell yeah! Seen amounts now that I look back on it. Rugby So we didn't even have. A, yeah, we didn't even have a coach. I was I was president for two years, so I would like. We we played our games on Saturdays, and you had to be at the rugby house by. Two o'clock on Friday for the drink up. So we were drinking for ten hours the day before a game. I mean, I'm looking back; it's just absurd. But I what would just eat whatever. What I was horrible diet back then. What I would eat like in college. No, I was going to ask uh, you what, what was what was your position in the uh, rugby? Uh, inside center. Okay. Um. So there's. On the on the wing, there's there's scrum half, there's fly half, then there's inside center, outside center, and winger. Okay. I was probably about twenty twenty pounds, twenty five pounds heavier back then. All right. Uh, one thing I'm curious about. Um, it seems like you're kind of leading to your health deteriorating after college. Uh, how would you characterize your health in high school and college on this diet? Like your fitness level sounds like it was probably higher than average. Uh, what about you know, annual colds, any kind of other uh, negative health issues when you were on that kind of sad, uh, high-protein, low-fat diet? Um, I actually didn't get sick very often at all. all right. um, I Maybe it was all that orange juice. I don't know, the vitamin C. Who knows? <laughs> but I, I – uh, I was just so active. I didn't. I didn't really get sick much. I remember a few times in high school I got sick, but nothing bad. Um, I was pretty much eating whatever, but I was, you know, working out like crazy. I mean, if I wasn't at practice for my sport, I was at the gym. So, I think that's what a lot of people don't get. You see so many people in the health and fitness community that are, you know, very young in their early twenties and stuff. Yeah. And they don't get it that. <laughs> lifestyle long term is not going to work your body starts to break down and we can get into that later but i think if you're if you're in your late teens early 20s and you're working out like crazy from my experience you can kind of eat whatever you want at that stage i mean if you're if you're working out like i mean i was working out a lot here i'm not talking about sitting in front of the computer playing video games i was always active always working out you know so i think i could eat i think i could have eaten anything back then and stayed skinny you know all right, so um, but I'm still still 20 pounds lighter now than I was then. So I wasn't like ripped or anything, <clears throat> but because I didn't watch my diet, you know, if I ate like I did now back then, I mean, I I would have been shredded, I'm sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, so so you finished college and you decided to go into. Uh, were you working on Wall Street? Did you did you study finance in college? Is that how you got into the stock market? No, I studied sport management, um, <clears throat> and I did a few other things before that. Okay. I was doing sa sales for a while in uh, marketing, and then I did. I went back to my hometown for a bit, and I did. Um, I was a program director for the town rec department. Cool. So I was running programs for kids and stuff, but I just felt like I needed to get out of my hometown. And at that time, I had been doing a lot of personal investing myself, and I was really into the stock market. All right. So then, a buddy, of my, a buddy of mine from high school had a job. He was doing really well, and uh, I reached out to him and told him I was looking to get into finance. And he said, "I'll get you a job." So he got me an interview with a, a small firm in in New York City, 
<clears throat> pretty shady firm when I look back at it. You know, that was in the that was in the late nineties, early two thousand. And uh <clears throat> I worked for I worked for them for a bit and then I went on to work for Wachovia. Um but it was nothing like what I wanted to do. I mean I was just into investing. I was into reading stock charts, more of a technical style where I felt being a stockbroker was very unethical and back then especially, you know, it was yeah. just, I was very unhappy from the get-go, dialing the phone 500 times a day to people didn't want to talk to you, trying to, you know, sell them. So <clears throat> it was a very stressful period and I was just kind of eating whatever at that time. It was hard to work out. Yeah. And that's when my weight really ballooned up. I was there for 9-11. Oh, so, man. So, I mean, I saw that live. Yeah, I saw that live from... I worked at that time. I was working on 40th and Park Avenue. Yeah. And uh, I was on the 40th, 40th floor facing the towers that day, and it was a really clear day. So I saw the second plane go in live. So Damn, it was just man. a real stressful time. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So it was a real stressful time. I was unhappy. I gained a ton of weight. I was up over... I have a, probably a 28-inch waist right now. I, I think I had a 34-inch waist when I left New York. Wow. I was up over 170 pounds, super inflamed. There's a picture of me. You can see my face. Uh, Food and Sport did an interview with me, and if you look at the thumbnail, you yep. can see a picture of me right after I left New York. That was when I was about 29 uh, years old. Were you, were, you exercising? And I was just, were you exercising at that time? A little bit, but not that much. I I had a membership to the gym, and I'd, I'd go. Yeah, I'd probably go maybe two, three days a week. But I'd order. <laughs> I'd be on my the subway home from. I lived in Brooklyn, and you know we'd come out of the out of the ground, and I'd be calling to order a pizza delivered to my place at ten at night, and I'd eat a whole large cheese pizza at ten yeah. at night. So. <laughs> I don't know how much you work out when you're eating, you know, 2,000 calories of fat at 10 at night, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So you, you got out of that gig. And um, so after, after that, did you, did you go from there to, uh, well, what was your next step? Okay. I, I quit that job in the summer of 2002 in like July. I went back to Cape Cod where I'm from and, uh, I own a. I bought a small house there. I bought my grandmother's house from the state back in the day, so yeah. I was living in uh, living in my own house back there, and just bartending at my buddy's bar, kind of figuring out what's my next plan in life. You know, I was almost thirty. It was a really, really crazy time. You know, one of those times where you can either just accept your life for just being unhappy, like a lot of people do, or just make a change. You know, so yeah. Uh, I spent the, I spent the summer there, and then the fall came around, and then that's when I started going. Okay, time to make a decision. It was getting cold, you know. The tourists had left. I wasn't making any money, was and your, uh, my best your, friend from college. Was, was your health getting any better for that year? Did your health improve? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. I I I started to lose some weight that summer a little bit, but I was still heavy. Um, I started to lose some weight. And then uh, my buddy from college, my best friend from college, was stationed out here in Hawaii. He was okay. an officer in the Marine Corps. Huh. And uh, he said, why don't we meet in Vegas for Thanksgiving? You know, because I, I was actually had my 10-year high school reunion, and I was living back there, and I didn't even want to go. I was that, that depressed with my life and how I looked and how I felt and what I was doing. Yeah. So I'm like... I'm down. Get me out of here. So I went out, met him in Vegas for Thanksgiving weekend in 2002. Uh -huh. That's, you know, late November. He's like, why don't you move out to Hawaii? Check it out. And I was like, okay, I'll think about it. I got back and I remember this very clearly. It was 16 degrees that Monday I got back. <laughs> <laughs> I barred. I, yeah, it's dark at 4.30 in the afternoon and I I made twenty dollars in tips on like a seven-hour shift. I'm like, oh. okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> Dude, I called them up. I called them up the next day. I'm like, okay, I'm coming. You know, that was like the end of November. I had my house rented. 
I packed a bag of clothes and some golf clubs, which I don't even use anymore. And yeah. I was out of there January January 2nd, I left. So five weeks later, I was on a plane to Hawaii with a bag of clothes and golf clubs. All and right. uh, that was over next month. It'll be 11 years out here. Wow, man. So, so that, crazy. And that was your first time visiting Hawaii. That was your first time going there. Yeah, I'd never seen it. Never been here. I live in the same condo I lived in my third month on the island. He bought this condo about my third or fourth month out here. Well, I got to tell you, I rented from man, him. He's been long. He's... I got to tell you, I, what, What's I'm, that? Je I'm jealous when I watch your videos, man. You're you're out in this beautiful, these beautiful scenes, man. It, it just looks awesome. Yeah, man. Life's a choice. You got to do it. Follow your heart, man. And I just, I always felt really good really uh close to the water and the beach and it was just in summers where i grew up i was so happy and then winter would come and i'd get depressed so i'm one of those people that like needs to be around the water and the ocean and the sun yeah so yeah all right let me um let me go down this path first and then i want to i want to come back to the martial arts but let's go down the nutrition path first so you know okay this, this is good yeah I, I got out in hawaii and uh, you want to know where I where my path was when I got here? Well, I want to know like oh. what started you thinking about looking at nutrition more seriously, and what what when did you start making significant changes in what you were eating? Well, I thought I knew nutrition, you know, ten years ago when I moved out here. I started doing like the Atkins diet. Yeah, <laughs> back yeah. in like. Oh, oh, three, oh, four. Um, and I actually lost a ton of weight, to be honest. But when you're not eating pizza at 10 at night, you're going to lose weight, you know? <laughs> I mean, I can't. I was eating I was eating buffets in New York for lunch, you know? Yeah. Probably. I mean, I was eating a lot of calories, and I was pretty sedentary in New York. Yeah. Um, so when I came out here, I started doing... I just, my goal was to get in shape, you know, it was, it's a very healthy lifestyle out here. You're yeah. going to the beach all the time. So it's, it's almost, you know, it was a priority of mine. So I started working out a lot and then I started to watch my calories and I went on Atkins. So I was probably only eating about 2000 calories a day, sometimes less, probably 1800 to 2200. That's when I really started to track my nutrition. Uh, I was were, lifting were, a ton of weights. Were you were you satisfied on were you satisfied on that amount of calories? No, I was pretty pretty edgy, yeah. very edgy, and and uh, snapped a lot. Very angry person, and I was living in like the Aloha State, you know. Yeah. So, I uh, yeah, I was very unbalanced. I felt looking back. Back there, all I, on, honestly, and that's why I try to talk to some people. Honestly, all I really cared about at that stage of my life was how I looked. You know, I was very, because I, I was just, yeah, it wasn't more about what I was doing for people. What I, it was just okay. I need to lose weight. I don't care how I do it. You know, I wasn't thinking about my long term health. Right. You know, at thirty, you don't. That's just, you start to think about that stuff at forty. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Part of my channel. Is to, now, part of my channel is to try to get people to think about that earlier in life, you know, make long-term health decisions. So All right. um, I lost a lot of weight, and then I started getting into running, and uh, I ran a lot. I was running, you know, five, six days a week for, you know, 30 to 55, 30 to 60-minute runs. So yeah. I got pretty lean, and uh, but I had never had coffee in my life. Huh. And I started. Remember, I remember. I remember. I got a gift certificate to Starbucks, and I was. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, "What am I going to use this for? I don't drink coffee." So one day I went in. I'm like, "I'll just get a shot of espresso before the gym," you know? Yeah. And I was like, "Holy shit! This is like, this is crazy!" You know, immediate like high from that. You know, I yeah. felt like invincible. <laughs> yeah. So. Man, looking back, what a powerful drug, you know? So I started doing like on I used the card until it ran out. I would buy like a double espresso before the gym. 
in the afternoon before my workout. And then that led to a double espresso in the morning. And then that led to a second one in the afternoon. So I was doing four a day. Eventually it led up to four in the morning, Damn. four in the afternoon. You know, you I bought know, my own espresso machine. It's, it's really interesting. I bought my that's, own machine. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's interesting. Right, sorry, you're, go ahead. You're a, good, you're a good person on this since you hadn't really drunk earlier in life, so you can see how, how, what a, yeah. how powerful that is. And, you know, something interesting on yeah. coffee I noticed recently is how much water it takes to produce coffee. I didn't realize that. But coffee is very uh, water intensive. But anyway, um, so 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 now you're drinking like like ten shots of espresso a day, man. Eight, yeah. Damn. I would, I would, I buy my own machine. Machine. I would do four shots in the morning, and then the afternoon I'd, I'd get. It was already not working for me. I'd be tired in the afternoon from my diet, lack of carbs, and then I'd around three or four o'clock. I'd have to get my. Four other four shots. Yeah. And uh, did, it, did it start having negative? No energy. Did it start to have negative consequences on your health? Um. Looking back, little things like uh, I uh, I was pretty constipated for sure. Like seeing how regular I am now versus then. Yeah, and I had really bad gas all the time. Yeah. I was. Just from all, just really bad gas. My stomach was always upset. Yep. Just no low energy, stuff like that. Stuff that you don't. I think for most people, it's just natural to feel that way. Yeah. So I don't think people really realize how unhealthy they are, even if they look healthy. You know, I looked good, but I, I was. I mean, I was more inflamed. You know, I was just puffier looking, but I was skinny. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I looked like. I lifted a lot of weights, and but I just didn't. Looking back, I didn't feel great, you know. Let me let me ask you something here, Jay. Uh, would you say that the paleo primal diet is simply a kind of refined Atkins diet? Yeah, I think they're all this similar. Yeah, yeah. I think I think paleo is probably a little healthier, in the sense that they do get some greens in. Yeah. Because when I was doing Ad, when I was doing Atkins, I was taking those Atkins supplements, those yeah. those bars and everything with all those fake sugars in it, which are you know horrible for you, cancer causing. So at least someone that's doing tr true paleo, not with all the paleo bars and stuff, but like true paleo, at least they're eating some greens and stuff, you know. Yeah. So I think paleo is probably a little healthier than what I was doing, but I still. Obviously, don't think it's a health diet, you know. All right. So, so you you did this for like it sounds like you did this this high coffee intensity uh, kind of Adkins variation for about a year or so. Or what, so what happened? Did you eventually start questioning these? No, I did it for two. I did it for like, I did it for like two or three years. But eventually, you need carbs. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> what I did, what I did was. I think I just started doing more almost calorie restricting looking back like I would eat I would eat some carbs throughout the day I would eat like I remember a breakfast for me after after Atkins for a few years would be like you know 100 calories of that uh Greek yogurt yeah with one banana was my breakfast so I'm wow. eating 200 calories for breakfast, you know? <laughs> and then for lunch I might have I might have like a Caesar salad for lunch, yeah, something like that. And then for dinner I might have like I don't know a steak plate or pokey, which is raw fish out here, you okay. know, stuff like that. And then at night I'd be eating dark chocolate because I was craving sweets, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would, I would eat, I would eat late at night. I would have a snack because I was obviously still hungry, but I was only eating, you know, eighteen hundred to two thousand calories a day, and I was super active. So, okay, I was just burning out, you know. All right so, now, um, so what, 
what happened at, at the end of like that three years? Was there something that clicked in you or like, uh, did you start thinking about vegetarianism, veganism? What, what occurred? Um, I don't know if this had anything to do with it, but it got me thinking. Um, I wasn't really close to my dad for years, um, but I got a phone call one day from my brother, and he just dropped out of a heart attack at 66. Wow. wow. So, and then I start seeing people, I don't know, I think you just become more, you start to realize you're not invincible when you get older you know yeah. start waking up with some aches and pains you wake up with aches and pains you have inflammation your recovery is not as good and I always I love to work out you know so I was just like what can I do to keep doing what I love you know yeah. I had started jujitsu I was super into jujitsu we can get into that in a minute but yeah I was training that like crazy but I, you know, I'd wake up with aches and pains, but I, st I still was training, you know. <clears throat> and then I watched some documentaries on Netflix, and that's what really led to the change. I watched Food Inc., and that's when I started to eat more real food. I, I was eating more. Uh, I always loved fruit, so yeah. I think I got to the point where I realized, you know, carbs are not gonna carbs aren't going to make me fat, you know, I just got to watch my calories, you know, my mindset, you know. Yeah. So I would eat more fruit. I was eating what's called acai bowls out here. Um, it's like a Brazilian fruit, kind of okay. high in fat though. Okay. It's a Brazilian fruit, and high in antioxidants, but they have them in bowls out here with granola and banana and strawberries on top. They're actually pretty delicious. Um, I started eating some of those for lunch instead of I have my same breakfast. I have that for lunch. I might have like, I have meat, meat or fish for dinner with you know salad or something. Um, but then I, I, I saw forks, forks over knives, and that's what really clicked, and that changed everything for me. Yep. So then I, I bought the China Study. I yep. read that, and then, then I went vegan. Pretty much at that point. I didn't realize how I didn't realize how uh I didn't realize at the time when I first read the China study that T. Colin Campbell was was eighty ten ten, like high carb, low fat. Yeah. I just started eating more plant I just started eating vegan, but I kinda got into the junk food stuff. I, I was eating a lot of oil. They never really talked about oil that much in, in Forks Over Knives. Yeah. So I would go to I would wake up, I'd have an acai bowl for breakfast. This is when I was vegan. I'd wake up, I'd have an acai bowl for breakfast. And then I'd get, I got a local vegetarian place across the street from where I live. I'd get maybe like an avocado wrap sandwich there. And then for dinner, I'd go back there. I was, I've, al I've always been lazy about cooking for myself. <laughs> um, I'd go back there and they have like a buffet where you could get whatever. Um, and I'd get like quinoa and like veggies on it and stuff like that, but everything is in oil. Okay. So, so during, when, I was, when, I first, during, when I first went, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, let me ask you, during this phase, you could say, I guess you could say you were kind of a, a, a somewhat high-fat cooked vegan, and how would you say your health uh, compared to what you'd been doing prior to that? You were kind of on that Atkins thing prior to that. You shifted into a vegan diet. And how did this change affect your health and uh, your your um, physical performance? I still felt amazing, even eating that stuff. Yeah, amazing. Like because I was eating more fruit and I was eating more plant food. Yeah. So you know, even though I was eating like quinoa and stuff, and it did have oil, and I was still eating quinoa. I was still eating, you know, rice, and I was still eating burritos and. And avocado. Avocado is a whole food. I'm not saying avocado is a health food for sure. Yeah. But my inflammation, the biggest thing I noticed going vegan was that my inflammation dropped. And I I wasn't getting sore anymore. And I was like, this is amazing, you know. And I lost like, I think I lost like, like six or seven pounds pretty fast. Yep. And my energy was through, my energy was through the roof. I was like, wow, I'm on to something. Then, though, after about, 
you know, seven, eight, nine months, I started getting more into some of the vegan junk foods, like probably because I wasn't eating enough calories. I'd eat what I just told you during the day. Yeah. And then I'd go whack back. Then I'd go whack back at, you know, nine at night. I get home from training and I'd whack back either a pint of, you know, uh, coconut ice cream, you know, <laughs> Ve- yeah. you know, the vegan, the vegan ice creams that they got the, I forget the brand. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd whack back one of, those, one of those or I'd have dark chocolate and stuff like that. Yeah. But I could get off coffee my second, my second month going vegan. I got off coffee. Hey, tell, so, tell that, the folks a little bit, what, what was your withdrawal like from, from those espressos, man? Did you have headaches for a couple of days? <laughs> Yeah, I kind of weaned off though. What I did was I was doing eight a day. Yeah. Then I went down to four, and then I went down to two. And I just, you know, it, a lot of coffee's a routine, you know. Yeah, that's. So yeah. I started buying those. Com- I started buying kombucha at the time, which okay. I don't drink anymore. I started dry- buying kombucha, and that would be my morning ritual. That's really. And eventually, smart. I just weaned off the. Co- yeah, and I weaned yeah. off the coffee. And I was just doing kombucha for a few months. I'm like, I don't need this stuff. And I dropped that. And uh, ever since then, I've been coffee-free, no cravings for it. I think the smell is amazing for me when I smell it cooked, like, you know, they're brewing it. Yeah. But the taste would be just, the taste would be just, I already know it would be way too acidic for me now. It just wouldn't taste good. So my palate's changed so much. Yeah. So. All right. So. Okay, I'm so, vegan. So Do you want to know how it got? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. So it sounds like you you you're you're vegan now, and you have had a lot of improvement, maybe even unexpected improvement in terms of physical performance. And then uh, you started addressing this fat aspect of it. And did you also begin to uh, focus on the, the percentage of raw, or did that matter? I was. I'm a very. I'm into research now and I'm into if you watch any of my videos I like to you know mention studies and stuff like that yeah so I was reading I was on the internet every night like instead of watching TV I'd just be watch uh, gathering information yeah because I think I think a lot, a lot of people go vegan and they don't educate themselves why yeah and then their friends get in their head their friends get in their head da 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 so I wanted as much ammunition as I could get for when people started to say, where do you get your protein, all this stuff. So I would just like, I would watch, you know, stuff from Campbell, Esselstyn, all those guys. I'd read, you know, journal articles and everything like that. And then one day I came across these crazy people on it, on YouTube. This girl was eating 30 bananas a day. <laughs> I, I saw a video of Harley interviewing free, Freely. Um... This is probably you know three or two or three year old video that they had at the yeah. time, and uh, <clears throat> it was you know she ate like a liter of OJ for breakfast and then fifteen bananas for lunch and fifteen bananas for dinner. I'm like that's crazy, but I was like it made sense to me. I'm like <clears throat> fruit to me always fruit just made sense. It was uh, yeah. It's everything. Everything's about it. It's perfect for human food. The way you can grab it off a tree, just the way it makes me feel. I knew it had a lot of vitamins and minerals. To me, uh, the, the sugar thing was not an issue for me ever when it came to fruit. It didn't make sense that people would think sugar's bad. Fruit's bad for you because it's just a natural food and it's a whole food. So reading Campbell's book, raw just made sense to me because it was like you're not altering. The food at all you're getting it in its natural state. So, yeah, Jay, Jay, let me let me interject something here. Um, uh, I thought it was so cool what you were saying when you were a little kid. You were just drinking tons of juice and how much you like juice. And all yeah. kids are like that, you know. And yeah. uh, I heard a a relative of mine. She she has this young kid, and they found the kid in in the room eating out of a bag of sugar, you know. And uh, that's that's because. We're, you know, we, we evolved. Yep. That's what we want. And, and I love that you're making this point. And um, it just it just makes sense. Everybody really has a sweet tooth. It's like we learn these unnatural habits. We learn how to eat these foods that really are not as enjoyable as, as our natural foods. So and, yeah. and, then, and it's cool. You've kind of uh, you've kind of referred to this in yourself that over time there's been this change in your palate. 
and it's like your palate has gone back to its natural yep. en enjoyment. But anyway, go ahead and continue. Yeah, we substitute fake fake sweets instead of giving kids what they should be getting, which is fruit, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So I immediately ordered uh, the 80-10-10 diet immediately. Like the, after that video, immediately ordered it. I'm yeah. kind of a, I am I can be OCD at times. So <laughs> the book the book came and uh, I just delved into it and I started right away before I even uh, like just started reading the. I think I read the book in like a day or two, but I started I, I just delved into it. So I uh, just started pounding banana smoothies, drinking, eating watermelon, just eating a lot of fruit. Yeah, uh, eating eating salad salads and so forth. <clears throat> and the first few days, I detoxed hard, and I was already vegan. Wow. I uh, I think it was I, was I what I did was when I started eighty ten ten right before I started eighty ten ten. I got the app Chronometer. Yeah, and and I put everything I was typically eating in a day into Chronometer, and it was like forty percent fat. And I was like, whoa. You know, wow. wow, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure there's days where it was a lot lower than that, and some days higher. But on a, a typical day, you know, with the oils and the and the uh, avocados and everything, it was like 40 percent fat. So, yeah. yeah, I started to detox really hard the first few days on 80 10 10, and uh, I just had a really bad headache. It was hard to consume this much volume of food. And uh, I just stuck with it, and uh, then I just started to feel great, amazing, and I started to just, you know, find out what worked for me. I lost about four, four or five more pounds, but I increased my calories almost a thousand calories a day. <laughs> wow! So it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. So I was eating probably twenty seven hundred to thirty two hundred calories a day at that time, and from about, you know. 2,000 to 2,200. So anywhere from, you know, five, six to 200 to 1,000 calories increase, and I lost weight. And uh, Were, my uh, then my, my recovery became even better when I dropped the fat down. So let me, let me ask you, were you happy that now you didn't really have to restrict your calories in any way? Was that kind of a freeing? It was so freeing because I'm less into after – I don't know if, what you want to call it. After eating this way for a while, I'm less into the ego part of how I look, you know? Yeah. It's it's just become secondary to me. So it it was always so obsessed with how I looked since I when I lost my weight, you know. I never wanted to gain that weight back. So right. the last ten you know, ten, nine, ten years I was just like anything to look good, you know. And then when I went vegan, I started to change that mentality. And then when I went 80 10 10, it was just, I didn't care anymore. I, I, don't, I don't care anymore as much, you know? But I, I just love food. I've always loved food. I love being able to eat as much as I want. And uh, yeah, and I just, I'm still lean, you know? I, whether I'm working out a ton or whatever, I'm always around 140 pounds, you know? I definitely right. have phases where I look more ripped. Yeah. Whether I, I, I do phases like I might go, I might lift weights or, or do do more cardio like running or something, where I look leaner. It, it, Harley talks about you know being skinny or or being fit. You know, there's there's stages I go through where I'm more fit and I can see my ab definition, but I still have no there's no body fat. You know what I mean? I'm I'm 140 whether I'm fit or not, eating as right. much as I want. So yeah, it's it was so liberating. <laughs> All right, now what what year was this that you shifted to? Was it completely raw, and what year did it happen? Uh, it was only two thousand eleven, I think. Okay. You no, know, two thousand. No, maybe only about eighty ten tens. Only been like a little over about maybe a year and a half. Maybe I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe a year and a half. But I was vegan prior for right, for a and, while. And and what's your take on the the raw cooked thing? What what, do, what would you say about that, if anything? 
I was pretty dogmatic at first. I mean, I was full, full raw for the first few months, and then I'd, I'd sneak some cooked carbs in here and there. Yep. But I was always like, I was always like ninety to a hundred percent raw for the first, you know, three to six months. Then I started to incorporate a little bit more cook. It was. I never realized how much money I was spending at first. When I first started A1010, I was just like, oh, look at, it was healthier, but I, it was like, oh, look at, they have, uh, they have, yeah. uh, nectarines, nectarines today. Awesome. And I buy a bunch of, and it's, you know, four ninety nine a pound out here. So yeah. I'm spending 15, 15 bucks for like two, 300 calories. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, 300. So. When I when I realized, whoa, I'm, I need to look at my finances a little bit. How much money I'm spending? I started to just go more to down the bananas and dates path, and yeah, watermelon, watermelon when it's in season, and you know, fresh squeezed OJs and stuff. And then I started to do a little bit more cooked at night, and uh, I've got I go through phases. You know, I'll go I'll go fully raw for a week, and then I might have cooked every night for for weeks you know but it's um, always for me it's go ahead. let me ask you uh, in Hawaii are there any I know a lot of the food you get there is imported but uh, are there some fruits that are produced locally I think they grow pineapples in Hawaii and I guess you get coconuts anything else like yeah. mangoes uh, there's honestly a ton of fruit that's local okay but where I live I don't live on the big island I live in Oahu uh, I live in a town called Kailua. It's about 15, 20 miles from Hon Honolulu. <clears throat> I got a, I got a Whole Foods in my town. Okay. It's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty expensive town. I have a Whole Foods, and I have a place called Down to Earth, where I told you earlier I would get my quinoa and all that stuff at. Um, okay. My the buffets at. Um, yeah. They're right around the corner from me, so I get most of my stuff from there. I do go to farmers markets from time to time, but. It's still pretty expensive, and to get the volume of food I want, I need to. I probably need to reach out and see if I can get something wholesale. I've asked around a little bit though, but most of my stuff either comes from you know Whole Foods or that down to earth market or farmers market. Um, there are trees out here. I've had friends give me mangoes, give me papayas, but I don't have that steady connection, you know. Yeah, and. Like I said, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> like when it comes to, I just, I'll I'll pay whatever. I just want to get. Yeah. I don't want to spend my. Whole, I don't want to go. Search the island, look for tr look for mango trees, and steal mangoes from. I just I I don't know. It's just not. I, I'm busy. I want to. I I like to do things that I enjoy. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty. My 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 life's pretty simple. I, I want to train jujitsu. I want to take my dog to the beach. <laughs> I want to share the message, and I want to share the message on my YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And that's pretty much my life, you know. That's awesome. That's <laughs> when awesome. I'm not working, so. All right. Let me. So let me ask, I don't. Go ahead. Let me ask you. Uh, so you, since you since you kind of went very raw, and you said you initially had like a few days of, of pretty intense detox, and then it was kind of just like. It was it was really good. Um, I'm curious about digestion and this transition from say cooked to more raw, or or while you've been doing you know a pretty intense eighty ten ten pretty uh, vigorous raw, and then you kind of add some cooked food. How how does that go down digestion wise and health wise? I still feel great. I, I always just steam steam my starches or boil them. Yep. Um, and I drink I drink so much water throughout the day. Um, How much? That my digestion's pretty awesome. There there are days there are days if I have like a huge thousand calorie starch meal if I didn't eat, eat enough water, I feel it in my stomach. It takes obviously it takes longer to digest. Fruits fruits the best. I'm never gonna not say that. Yep. Fruits the best food for humans for sure. It digests amazing. It's incredible. But I still feel pretty awesome on starches. Um, All right. 
And I, I, I eat a very, very simple diet, meaning I don't, you know, I eat like a couple things, you know, I'll eat like, yeah, you know, sweet potatoes or organic red, always organic, organic red potatoes or rice or, you know, that's kind of it. I have a, I have a, I'll have a rice and bean burrito once in a while, bloom once in a while. Yeah. But, you know. I think when you eat the same, I think, I think a lot of people have issues with starches. This is just my opinion. I could be wrong. That are, are raw for so long is that they're just introducing a new food. It's no different than someone who ate a standard American diet and then they go to eighty ten ten. They complain about digestion. They complain about eating that that much volume of food. But everyone based how they felt the first one or two days on their diet, this, I would have quit 80-10-10, right? I had headaches, my stomach couldn't digest the food. Yeah. I think your body's going to adapt what you eat. It's like people eat a standard American diet their whole life and don't. some people don't have issues, you know? It doesn't mean it's healthy, but um, I, think, I think anytime you change your diet, you're going to feel something right away. You know, but I think I, if you... Yeah, I, I like what you're saying, Jay. Uh, one thing I'd add to it, though, you know, I read this thing uh, on a on a paleo uh, site where they're they're talking like the first 30 days you can expect these really funky symptoms, and uh, and don't worry, you know, after 30 days it's gonna get normal, and uh, I, I, I that's a bit a bit too much to swallow. So I I think there's a lot of truth in what you're oh, saying. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not talking about like. All these. I'm talking about just simple, simple digestion. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But, so you like you like mono meals. Yeah, most of the time, um, one or two fruits typically. Yeah. I would love. To, listen, I, I would I would love to have my house full of, you know, persimmons and and all these crazy exotic fruits out here, you know, I would love to have mango. Mangoes are 4.99 a pound yeah. at Whole Foods. Local yeah. mangoes, it's absurd. I mean, I would love the diversity. I would love to I would love to scat, like, you know, eat three mangoes here, have some papaya. Like, it's not like I don't think that's optimal. I I I believe in diversity and throughout the year I do always incorporate different foods, but you can't deny the financial issue yeah. of it, you know. I love, I, I love that. I get my bananas. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's I get my to... bananas. I get my bananas from Whole Foods. I buy it by the case. I get ten percent off. It's still fifty-six bucks for forty pounds. Yeah, it's a dollar forty-nine a pound for organic. I'm always going to buy organic. It's dollar forty-nine a pound. If you live in California, Trader Joe's is twenty nine cents a pound. You know, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So, I buy my dates from sevenhotdates dot com. They have free shipping. That's cheaper than I could get dates out here in the store. And those are my two staples. And then I will buy other foods all the time. I don't want people to think I just eat bananas and dates and that's it. Like. I ate persimmons yesterday. They had some ripe. Pers uh, they had some persimmons. You know, five persimmons were six bucks. You know, and they were small. They were really small. Yeah. Um. I bought. I have some pears that I have like. I have like four pears, which are ripening right now. Only four. <laughs> That's like five or six bucks for four or five. Four or five pears. You know. Yeah. I just can't get enough calories without the bananas and dates. You know. I love to have other fruits here and there as snacks and stuff, but I can't do a mono meal of of nectarines out here. I could maybe back east in the summer because they're much cheaper. I grew up, but like to get six, eight hundred, a thousand calories from some of these foods is just cost me a fortune, you know. You know, Jay, so. Jay, I, I I love that you're making this point, and I on some of these uh, these exchanges and these raw food uh, blogs, I, I think people just are not recognizing that. You know, maybe maybe you're somebody who can get these uh, case of bananas for ten bucks, but I can't, you know, I, I can get 26 bucks. Yeah. That's, that's not organic, uh, you know. So yeah. I think if anybody who's being really honest, for most folks, 
it's expensive. It's expensive. Now that doesn't mean it's not a good thing to yeah. do, you know, but it's, it is more expensive. So, um, anyway, yeah. Anyway, I don't um, want, I don't want people to think that, I don't want people to think that money is more important than like, I'll, I'll spend all my money on food. Like it's not, that's my priority is my health. I don't want people to think that, but if I can eat bananas versus spending four times as much for another fruit, I'm going to eat bananas. You know, <clears throat> John Kohler did a video with Doug Graham, you know, a month or two ago. He's 20 bananas a day health. Like you eat what you can get. For you know, it's not. I, I would love to eat a wide variety, but it's just it's not feasible to everyone, you know. So yeah, yeah, I, I love that, Jay. It's just practical. So um, while we're here, mm -hmm. let me ask you. Um, let me go through a couple of nutrients with you, and you tell me uh, what you've decided for yourself in terms of these nutrients. So the first one is B12. Um. I've never felt like I've had a deficiency. I, I've looked up the symptoms, and every few months I go back and I online and look at the symptoms. I go, okay, do I have? Do I feel this, this, and this? And I've never felt that way. I do take a because it's so cheap and it's such an easy thing to do. I don't believe in taking a lot of supplements. If you read T. Colin Campbell's book Whole. I'm not into like over supplementation. I don't take any supplements at all except. Every every once in a while, I'll pop a sublingual vitamin B12, yeah. and if I haven't done it for a while, I'll pop one every day for a week, and then I won't have one for three months. You know, yeah. I just take it here and there just to be sure. My next blood test, I do want to get it more extensive, and I want to get that checked just to see where I'm at. Okay. But um, I think right. it's something. I think it's I think it's a supplement that some people need and some don't but i think you need to be aware of it because it's 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 serious and it's something you should take seriously and get it checked because the longer you're on this lifestyle the more chance you have it but anyone can get vitamin b12 deficiency it's not it's not right. just a vegan thing right. yes we are we are we are susceptible to it so take it seriously get it checked and uh if you're low take a supplement that's it Beautiful. I don't All think, right. you know, overthink it. It's cheap. Yeah. Now, the next one I doubt is going to be much of an issue for you because you're in Hawaii and you get a shitload of sun. But uh, what, do you, what do you think about the D3 the, or the vitamin D thing? Yeah, it's not an issue for me. I'm out in the sun every day. I haven't even thought about it, you know. <laughs> Getting out to the beach is part of my life, <laughs> you know. Yeah. The reason why I'm here is... My, the reason why I live, I chose to live here, is because I want to be able to go to the beach two, three times a week. You know, yeah. I'll sneak, I'll, I'll run down with my dog for an hour if I have the free time, and just she'll play, and I'll just be catching rays. I'll do a video or two down there. You know, yeah. So it's not an issue for me. If you live in Alaska, I get it checked, obviously. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't live. Though, so I can't really speak from experience on that one, to be honest. So that's cool. Now this one, um, you know, I've kind of I've kind of gotten this notion from Don Bennett, and I don't know how how important it is, but uh, what what have you read, studied, thought about iodine? Uh, I haven't looked into it that much, to be honest. Um, okay. I do like to I do like to put dulse on my. Uh, on my starches though okay so that's one way i get i do get iodine I, do i think i had had or would get a deficiency not really um but i do like that as a little alternative to you know salt or something i i, I have iodine uh, i mean sorry i have dulse which is you know the uh the, the grind the, the fine we, dulse i'll just put yeah. it on like yeah, yeah. on yeah. my starches and then also once in a while I'll buy the nori sheets of dulse, the, the nori sheets, yeah. and I'll wrap rice in there and eat those. So it's something I haven't think about. I enjoy eating that once in a while. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, I think. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm kind of from the the T. Colin Campbell camp, you know. If you eat whole foods, a variety throughout the year, you're gonna get everything you need. So. 
All right. That's my take on it. The, 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 here's the thing. A lot of people aren't buying quality produce, you know? Yeah. So if you're buying super cheap fruit from Walmart or, I mean, Kmart, or Walmart, Woolworths, whatever, non-organic fruit sprayed with pesticides, you're eating canned fruit, you're eating regular potato, I think your nutrition is going to lack, you know? I'd rather pay for organic bananas and organic dates and organic lettuce and eat less variety but eat more pure whole foods, healthier foods packed with more nutrients than just eating 8 million different fruits just so I can eat those fruits. But if the quality is not there, I think it's not going to have the nutrients, you know. Gotcha. That's just gotcha. my take. You know, it, perhaps you might be a good person to ask, have you read about this? You know, I, when I think of bananas, I don't think of them, even if they're not designated organic, I mean, how many pesticides can they use on bananas? Have you, have you read about this? Or what, what are they using on a, on a regular banana that they're not using on organic bananas? Uh, they're, they're sprayed for sure. Um, you know, I, I just come from the camp. I, I know organic. I, I believe in natural foods. I, I, I don't want to eat those foods. <clears throat> so Yeah, yeah. If I'm only if I'm only eating organic, why do I have to research it? You know, <laughs> I don't know. That's the way I look at it. I All don't right. I I don't think I don't think chemicals are healthy. I don't think I don't yeah. think stuff they're using in World War II and now they're putting in our food supply is a health food. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I try right. to avoid I try to avoid all pesticides in my food. Is it possible all the time? No, but for the majority. I, I buy organic, you know. There are fruits from time to time I buy that aren't organic. Like, okay, Whole Foods had a deal on mangoes last year, like 50 cents a mango. I was 18 bucks a case. I bought like 10 cases of it. They yeah. weren't organic, you know. But if it were grapes, I wouldn't have bought those because the pesticides on grapes and apples are much higher than they would be on a food where you can take the skin off, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if yeah. you can only get access to regular, if you if can, if you can only get access to non-organic fruit, I wouldn't eat the fruits that have. I would eat the fruits like bananas and mangoes and stuff where you have a little bit of coverage on that. You know. Yeah. I wouldn't be eating grapes and and apples non-organic. Right. Potatoes um, are the worst I've heard. Potatoes are the worst I've heard. So if right. you're gonna eat potatoes, eat organic for sure. That's good to know. Okay. Um, you've mentioned uh, T. Colin Campbell several times, and I think I saw somewhere that you've taken his course. So maybe you could say a little bit about yeah. that, that experience. Uh, how long did it take? How intense was it? Uh, did, did you learn a lot? Uh, you, you glad you did it? Yeah, I'm super glad I did it. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, it goes over lots of different studies in it. So what it is, it's an online course you can sign up for through eCornell, through Cornell. And it was it's like twelve hundred and something dollars, which is a bit pricey. But, you know, again, I wanted that ammunition, I want that knowledge, I want to know why I'm doing this. Um, and you take it's what it is, is three two week courses. Yep. So I had three different instructors. The way the course was set up, you take uh you watch a video, which is very educational. The it the It'll have you know anywhere from ten to thirty minute video, um, and he'll have different. It'll be himself talking about studies he's done, or it'll be different other lecturers like uh, John McDougal did one for him, Neil Bernard did one for him, a couple other guys. Um, you'll watch that, and then you'll answer questions at the end of that, and then you'll go into a group discussion where your your teacher will send you. Uh, you'll go on the site and you'll have to answer read something and answer questions to that and then you would have to have a group discussion you would have to contribute to the group discussion and so forth and then you take tests and stuff like that it was pretty easy but it was easy I don't know if it's easy because I I'm in into it and yeah it's something I enjoy or you know yeah if it was a foreign language I don't, I don't know how difficult it'd be you know <laughs> so uh, I loved it though and I saved all the files to my computer I can't save the videos, but I could save the hard doc stuff to my computer, so I can always go back and look at it. Um, All right, it was cool. Well, yeah. Um, listen, uh, Jay, 
I have taken up an hour of your time. I'll keep going, man, but uh, tell me what your schedule's like. I mean, are you free or what? Uh, if you want to ask a couple more questions, okay. go ahead. All right, you thanks, mean, man. Maybe, maybe, you know, 10 or 15 more minutes. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Um, uh, first, if you could real quick tell me, uh, well, well, something that's on my mind I'd like to hear your thoughts on, you know, um, think of how many years you lived without seriously considering diet in the way that you look at it now. And, and I myself, you know, I was, uh, I was vegetarian for, for like 25 years before I seriously thought about going vegan. So what, what's up with that? Why, why did it take us that long? And, and what's up with um, kind of communicating to the public, getting through this, you know, kind of apparent barrier into the broader public consciousness as to the ramifications of this diet. I mean, now you know what this diet does nutritionally, and they don't. And they don't. The government doesn't want us eating like this. <laughs> We're t the the brain clarity's t too much there. We're too aware. Yeah. You know, you just see everything around you. You see through the bullshit, especially when you got enough carbs in you. You just see bullshit right away. Like they want us. I, I mean, I hate to get into that, but I mean, I, you, you're just fed so much stuff from the day you're born, you know, milk commercials, you know, yeah. post, uh, you know, advertisements for, for meat, uh, everything, uh, labels on these things, you know, fortified with vitamin D, fortified with this, like, you just don't, you don't think about it, you just think that's the way it is, like, <laughs> especially some of these kids, and I mean, I've, I've watched stuff online of, these kids in the inner cities, they don't even, they show them a piece of fruit and they didn't even know what it was. Like, it's just sad, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's sad. Um, it, it, it's all about money. It's always going to be about money. Even, you know, Campbell talks about that in his, the studies that he's done in the class. And it doesn't make financial sense for government or big business to want you to know the truth, you know? Mm, okay. I mean, that's yep. that's my take on it. So, all right. Um, and another, this is like a really big issue, but maybe just you could address it for a few minutes. Um, you, it seems that primarily you took this path for health reasons, fitness reasons. What have you uh, come to think about the ethical and environmental aspects of eating this way? Um, it's a huge issue for me now. I mean, I've always loved animals. Like, I remember one of the most disturbing images of my life was I remember driving with my dad when I was a kid. We went to the movies, and uh, on the way back, he ran over a dog that ran out on the road, and it just destroyed me. And I was yeah. really upset. And I remember another time with my dad, too. I remember seeing this little cocker spaniel. We were like in a two lane highway, a two lane. Yeah two-lane road and there was a car like two car lengths in front of us and a little cocker spaniel and I saw the the owner screaming for it a cocker spaniel ran across in front of us and got run over right right in front of me oh man and I remember just thinking just being really upset for that really upset for that woman just always loved animals you just I, I just think there's a huge disconnect you know there's yeah. such a huge disconnect and when you start to eat real health foods and you start to become more aware and you're carved up you start to see things you didn't necessarily see when you're eating poorly but then you also I watched I watched Earthlings <laughs> game over there you know <laughs> highly highly recommend anyone watch Earthlings um, it's very hard to watch some of these things but ever since then like I have no desire to eat eat another being that wants to live just as much as us and the health aspect uh, and the environmental aspects, uh, Campbell goes over that in his class too. Some pretty frightening st statistics, you know. Um, one of them, from the top of my head, was in the Midwest. You know, the factory farming runoff running down into the Gulf, and you know, the the Gulf. Yeah. How it's just eating away animal, eating away. You know, slowly, slowly, just spreading out. You know, from down in the Gulf and nothing can live down there now in that area you know it's just scary yeah. so i went i went this way for my health but yeah both of them are huge huge priorities for me now All right
And, uh, there's um, there's a one uh, item you might have some knowledge on. Uh, I've seen it a little bit. Uh, like apparently, there's some study where they they implicate uh, heavy consumption of fruits and a, and a rise in triglycerides. Have you have you come across this? And uh, it, my my feeling is that it's incorrect, but I don't know the the data on it. Uh, I think I've seen McDougal kind of reference this that. If you're eating a lot of fruits, then there's a triglyceride issue. I don't think it's it's accurate. Have you come across this? Um, yeah, I've read into that a little bit. Um, I've read also that you know initially that can happen, and then over time, you know they can go back down. Okay. Um, I, I think it also depends on what else you're eating. Personally, you know, if you're eating a lot of fat and everything else. Yeah. Um. It's a, a non-issue. You think it's a non-issue? Long term, yeah. I, I don't think it's... I mean, how are people... I mean, look at the people going on, on, on this lifestyle. Their cholesterol is dropping, right? I mean... Right. Um, my, my, my triglycerides went up a little bit when I went from vegan to 80-10-10. Yep. But all, everything else was stable everything else you know feels fine i'd like to get my i'm going to get my blood test done again and i'll see where i'm at now after over a year you know okay um, i don't think it's an issue okay. i think i think it's something to be aware of something to check out but I, from what i've read it happens initially sometimes and then it comes back down that's what All i've right. read all right, so now I want to hear a little bit about the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if, if you're willing. Sure. And um, just uh, why did you pick that martial art form, and, and why has it kind of uh, inspired you, and what excites you about it? Well, it's something I always wanted to do. I remember seeing the, the first UFCs back in, like, 93 and 94, and I remember seeing this guy, Horace Gracie, who was, like, 175 pounds, just controlling everybody you know huh. and there's something I always wanted to do I mean back then I was a more aggressive person I'd say and yeah. uh, I remember I got into there was nowhere around uh, this was before I moved to New York I found this guy about 30 miles from me on the Cape and he taught judo and I remember one summer going up to him and Taking judo because it was a, and I would ask take privates with them and just do groundwork. Okay. Judo to some some of the judo groundwork is similar to Brazilian jiu jitsu. Is, is I, judo I, Japanese? Is judo Japanese? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So uh, I bought the Gracie tapes, Gracie com, Gracie uh, the old audio uh, VHS tapes. Yeah. And I, would, yeah. and I would watch some of those, and then I got into went to New York and just kind of forgot about it. And then when I moved to Hawaii, a guy that used to work at where I work, he had his own jiu-jitsu school, and he told me to come down. I was like, at that point, I was really into to, to running, and I kind of knew my personality. I'm very, you know, if I get into something, I'm just kind of all in, you know? Yeah. So I didn't even start jiu-jitsu until my sixth year out here. I started, uh, I was ready I got out of a relationship, and I was ready to, you know, do something new. So I went down and I checked it out, and that was in uh, March of '09. And ever since then, I've just been. That's all. I don't even lift or run anymore. I just do that. So right. I started. Tra I started training a ton. I was training, you know, some days up to ten times a week, eight to ten times a week. Um, I got my blue belt really fast. And jiu-jitsu is not like karate or another martial art. It takes 10 plus years to get your black belt. It's a long process. Um, wow. I got my blue belt in like four and a half months. And I started doing all these tournaments. You know, I was like the 38. When I was a blue belt, I was around 38. I was doing all these tournaments, competing against like guys in their early 20s and stuff. <laughs> And uh, I was like the old guy out there. <laughs> uh, it's just my passion. I love it. I love everything about it. It's it's a very cerebral art where you use your mind, and it's very technical. And it's not like a, a, 
a super physical art, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's awesome. So that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, what's been your experience with injuries in, in practice and even tournaments and, uh, I guess healing. And, uh, I guess one of the things you learn when you're practicing is how to avoid injury. Talk a little bit about that. Um, well, when you're more technical, you're going to avoid less injury. If you're very aggro and you, and you, trying to just bully your way, you're going to get more injuries. Um, but also, it, nutrition just plays such a huge part. Um, I train with a couple guys, and they're always, you know, hamstrings are always pulling up. and everything. They're just so dehydrated, you know. Huh. 80, I mean, most of our society is dehydrated, and that's going to cause a lot of injuries. So if you stay hydrated, you eat clean. I remember when I started this, when I went vegan, I always would wake up, you know, aches and pains. I was training a ton, and uh, I had I had to stop lifting weights for a while because my shoulders. I think I have I had arthritis or something. It was so painful to just lift my arm after training. If I was still if I was lifting weights and doing jujitsu, I, I I couldn't like my whole arm, shoulder would tingle. Huh. And uh, I remember when I went vegan. All that stuff went away when I went, especially eighty ten ten. Like all the inflammation went away, all my joint pain. I went back to lifting last year for like six months, and I never had. And I was still training a lot. I had no shoulder issues or nothing. So, staying hydrated and eating, you know, staying away from. I I believe in that whole alkaline acid thing a little bit. Where yeah, yeah. If you're if you're eating acidic forming foods, it's going to create inflammation in your body. So if you're eating, if you're drinking energy drinks and you're eating processed foods and you're eating a lot of meat and a lot of dairy and having a lot of coffee, you're going to create inflammation in your body and that's going to inhibit your recovery. If you're eating real clean plant foods, alkaline forming foods, I noticed it 1000%, like no aches and pains. More, <laughs> five years ago, I'm 40 now and I have no aches and pains where three, four, five years ago I'd wake up so much joint pain. Like I mentioned, my shoulder. It's just it's just amazing. People yeah. need to t really look at what they put in their body. It's amazing. That's that's a great point. Um, one thing that's coming to my mind if you'll address and, and I'll let you I'll let you go here in a second, uh, is um you know, bodybuilding and the the, the body image and weightlifting and the taking of protein, and then of course beyond that, you know, steroids and stuff like that. Um, let's say let's say somebody's not on steroids, but they're eating a crap load of protein. Do you think uh, a lot of this physical image that they're getting is is really just inflammation, or how much? Uh, I mean, what it, is it for you? There's no difference in strength cultivation. In fact, I guess for you, you'd say it's better on this on this more natural diet. Well, I don't lift anymore, so it's hard to be subjective on that, to be honest. Um, okay. But if I was, yeah, I don't think there'd be an issue. Um, yeah. Definitely, the inflammation is is uh, if you're if you're eating a lot of inflammatory foods, yeah, you're gonna look puffier, you're gonna look necessarily bigger. But if you strip away all the, you know, the 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 water in your the muscle's still there. It's the same, you know. Just look at a guy who <clears throat> looks extremely bulky before he he's lifting, and then he cuts for a bodybuilding show, right? Yeah. An amateur, an amateur. I'm not talking about someone bloated out on steroids here. I'm talking about an amateur bodybuilding show. They they'll look as lean as I do when they go on stage. Yes, the striations are there because they're dehydrated and so forth. But <laughs> if, you, if you break down really, if you strip away all the water and the salt. You know the muscles pretty similar between someone who lifts weights like I if I was lifting weights versus someone on the highly inflammatory foods. If you strip away all that, like a good example is when they when they cut all that stuff out for a show. You know you get to see yeah. the muscles the same. They're it's just they're inflamed. You know. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Um, last question, Jay. Um, how much water do you drink a day? Um. I will always wake up with a liter of water, okay. and then when I go to train, I take a 1.5 liter of water with me, and 
you know, I, I, I'm, I drink that, you know, during and after. And then if I train again, I'll do another one of those. So right now I'm at four liters, you know. That's, yeah. that's on a day if I train twice. <clears throat> and then I always have a liter of water before I go to bed. I don't, like, I, if I'm home, I'm sipping water. Like, I'm, okay. I'm, probably, I'm probably drinking four liters a day if I had to guess. All right. Four, between three and five liters a day on average. So right. most days probably four to five, yeah. And can you tell the audience, Jay, the name of your website, the name of your blog, um, any any references that you'd like to give the audience? I don't know if you're coaching folks on, on this kind of stuff, but a way to contact you. If, if I, I was for a bit, but I don't know. I'm not really doing this for for money. I don't know. Yeah. I just get enjoyment out of people sending me an email and just saying they feel great, you know. All right. Um, watch my YouTube if you want to support me. <laughs> You know, I have my, my stuff monetized and people will say, oh, you're, you're, it's just absurd when people try to use that excuse. <laughs> when someone makes money on YouTube, they're not asking you for money. They're not collecting money from you. They're collecting it from the companies we want to, <laughs> we want to shut down. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like they're paying me to tell them not to eat their food. So when people say, like people give Harley stuff, well, you're making money off your, it's just absurd, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Watch my YouTube, share my YouTube, help me get the message out there. If that's how you want to support me, I don't, I'm never going to ask you for money for supplements or anything like that. Um, I've done some private coaching. If someone's insistent on it, yeah, I'll, I'll help you out for sure. Um, and you're, 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 I answer a lot of questions for free through my pages. But okay, my my YouTube is Plant Based Athlete. Yep. My Facebook is Plant Based Athlete, and my my Instagram and my Twitter is at 80, 10, 10 athlete altogether. The reason why I didn't do plant-based athlete for Instagram, it wouldn't let me do that long of title oh, okay. I, when I did it back then. So I did 80, 10, 10 athlete. But, so YouTube's plant-based athlete, Facebook's plant-based athlete, and then Instagram and Twitter are 80, 10, at 80, 10, 10 athlete. So just well, 80, 10, 10 athlete. And uh, you know, I have Jay. a – sorry, I also have a blog that I haven't been – doing much lately but it has have some past stuff on there and that also has my email on there so that's uh, plantbasedathlete.com but it's plant-based-athlete.com and you can email me at info at plantbased that, that website.com gotcha gotcha well I, I'm, I'm honored Jay because I know you could have been outside in the sun on the <laughs> beach you know, enjoying the day, but uh, oh, it's only uh, it's only ten fifty. I still have time for that. So, <laughs> uh, but but, dude, thanks a lot for taking the time, and it was it was a great interview. I really appreciate it. Um, can you tell me? I'm gonna I'll share this on my Facebook and stuff when it's up and running on your YouTube. So your YouTube is what? Uh, yeah, my my YouTube channel is Raw and Cooked Vegan. Okay, and, and, and you do, the, you've done a lot of interviews like this, right? Yeah, I've got I've got about thirty interviews up, and um, and it's good. I, I like this format. It lets me it lets people get to know you a little more. So it's not yeah. just an eight, eight minute thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, and I'm really enjoying doing it, and I'm learning a lot. So cool. Um, the website is uh, rawandcookedvegan.com, and um, and I do invite all vegans and raw fooders who want to participate. They can contact me rawandcookedvegan at gmail.com. Uh, and I'd love to just work with anybody. It's, so I, I'm, I'm with you. I want to get the message out there. I'm tired of us uh, waiting for the broader public to... to exactly. You know. we, we have to be the message. Nobody else is going to be it. So I, uh, I encourage everyone to share their story, start a Facebook page, start a YouTube channel, spread the message. Not everyone's going to be able to relate to me. Um, there's a ton of different people out there you can relate to. So Yep, Thanks yep. for doing this, Paul. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll definitely share your share this on my page, and ho hopefully people can find you. Maybe they can relate to some of the people that you interviewed and stuff. Thanks a million, Jay. No problem. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye. All right. Bye.